Next on Special Report, a combination boycott, strike, and political protest sends hundreds of thousands of immigrants and their supporters into the streets, leaving many plants, farms, and stores shut down across the country. The message, we may not be here legally, America, but you need us. We'll have two reports plus analysis. The president says he's encouraged by what... Welcome to Washington. I'm Britt Hume on a bright spring day across America. Factories slowed production, stores and markets closed, and crops went untended as hundreds of thousands of immigrants, legal and illegal, streamed into the streets. What you're seeing right now is an aerial view of New York City right at this moment. They are protesting their treatment at the hands of a country that they say needs them as much as they need it. Chief Washington correspondent Jim Angle has an overview of the day's demonstrations. Jim? Britt, as Congress begins the effort once again to reach a consensus on immigration reform, many of the nation's immigrants walked off their jobs in hopes of demonstrating how much the nation relies on them. Waving signs that say Great American Boycott in English and Spanish, hundreds of thousands of immigrants, legal and illegal, stayed away from work today and were urged by activists to boycott shops as well. All an effort to demonstrate how important immigrants are to the U.S. economy. The whole idea is to make sure that we send a message that the sleeping giant is awake. And this is only the beginning of a movement. In Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Denver, and Washington, D.C., among others, illegal immigrants and their supporters marched, some just to demonstrate their numbers, others to demand specific changes in the law, some to demand an end to any law limiting immigration. In fact, some flatly demanded that Congress immediately grant what amounts to amnesty. I actually believe in full legalization. I mean, we have workers here, we have a need for them, and we need to respect them. In other demonstrations last month, large numbers of Mexican flags caused a negative public reaction. So this time, there were plenty of American flags. I want to be part of this country. That's why I'm carrying the American flag, and I'm carrying it because I want the people to know that I want to stay here. You know, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of carrying this flag. Some immigrants' rights groups actually oppose the boycott and fear that groups with a leftist political agenda are trying to hijack their cause. One group called Answer, for instance, opposes sanctions on Cuba and was even against the war in Afghanistan. One organizer of an earlier demonstration suggested the U.S. has no right to stop immigrants. Listen, when you rein in your corporations and stop creating havoc, poverty, exploiting, okay, extracting the natural resources and, and the labor from those countries, that's when you're going to have no more immigrants into the U.S. Just the kind of rhetoric Carlos Castro was worried about. He's a grocery store owner and the head of a Latino immigrant group in the Washington, D.C. area who opposed the boycott. We really uh, support the immigrant uh, cause and we want to do everything we can, but I think you just... Uh, uh, the boycott is not going to do us any good at, at this moment. In Washington, for instance, out of the 47 organizations that supported the last demonstration, only one embraced today's boycott. People around Washington were more sensitive to the political repercussions in Congress, which is trying once again to fashion a compromise on immigration reform. I think we have to give uh, time to uh, the Senate and to Congress to really think a good law that can uh, uh, benefit the community. And creating uh, frictions, creating antagonism is not going to help us. Nevertheless, many businesses around the country closed in sympathy or to allow workers to join the boycott. That was especially true in meatpacking and construction. And this landscaper in California gave his workers the day off. I mean, many of them are undocumented workers. Is it fair to say that? Uh, well, I'm not going to comment on their uh, status. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not Homeland Security, but... Uh, I gave them a day off. Uh, I knew they wanted to be here. I gave them a day with pay. But some immigrants who came and waited in line for their papers were not happy about others demanding amnesty. We're all here today to tell those illegal protesters, you do not speak for me. It is not fair that illegal immigrants feel they have the right to jump in line in front of all of us who have been working really hard legally to be here. One of the most remarkable aspects of these activities is how many, is how open many were about illegal immigration. 
For decades, illegal immigrants had done everything they could not to call attention to themselves, but facing renewed efforts by some members of Congress to deport them, they're now trying to demonstrate the U.S. needs them and relies on them, and that they have supporters who will fight to keep them here. Britt. Jim, thank you. Because illegal immigrants still operate largely below the radar, it is impossible to know exactly how many people in Los Angeles are there illegally. But as Fox News correspondent William Lajeunesse reports, thousands of them and their supporters fill the streets there today. William? Well, Brett, we know that about a third of the county workforce is foreign-born. Up to 15 percent could be here illegally. That could be 500,000 people. As a result, we did have widespread walkouts here today. Some businesses closed out of solidarity and others because they had to. This apparel factory in downtown Los Angeles, typical of Southern California businesses that depend on illegal immigration. Last week, it looked like this. Today, empty. The owner forced to close because many of his workers labor in the so-called underground economy. What are you going to do? Send a couple of million people back to their home countries? You know, it's, it's going to be bad. And I mean, it's just go with the flow, help us out, we'll help you out. You know what I mean? Like, we got a lot, we can do a lot more for this country. Today's protest is supposed to be a wake-up call for America and a historic day for its undocumented workers who say they're no longer willing to be invisible or silent. This woman's brother is here illegally. He doesn't have papers, so I call him and I say, I'm going to walk for you because I want you to have papers like I do. Latinos in California called today's boycott Nothing Gringo Day, pledging to do nothing and buy nothing American. That offended some Americans who say the undocumented population is ruining the country, refusing to assimilate, driving down wages, and taking jobs. We go look for jobs, it's like, it's all... Mexicans and everything, all that's supposed to belong to us. We built this place, you know. Opponents and advocates alike blame both political parties for 20 years of government and political neglect and contradictory laws, discouraging immigrants at the border, but encouraging them once they're in. I hope both parties uh, get together and discuss this problem because uh, it's affecting the whole economy and the whole country. And, at Britt, at this point in time, a recent field poll study here in California showed about up to 70 percent of Californians supported the so-called comprehensive approach, open arms now, and then close the door. Britt? William, one question. Um, is, do you sense a difference in the attitude that the Mexican immigrants have from those from other countries out there? You know, we do, Britt. Um, one, one thing we're finding, of course, is that... Um, with Mexico, it seems to be a generational entitlement, if you will. We know that the government of Mexico is even projecting 400 to 500,000 Mexicans will continue to come into the United States for the next decade, regardless of what Congress does. 49% say they want to come to the United States, and up to half of them would do so illegally. Brett? William, thanks very much. Wow. Trustees of the...